This is Tubal Cain and uh, in this video it's version 2 of how to make a nut buddy for the Bridgeport Mill to, a combination tool to remove the uh, uh, collet and uh, the tool from the drawbar combination wrench and brass hammer that's version 1 and on this one I'm going to take uh, another 3 quarter inch wrench and uh, make make it into a similar tool only it will have a lead hammer on it now if you haven't seen a version one be sure and go back and watch that this is version two gremlins got into my camera and removed a video clips and that was the clip of me drilling uh, oh, the eighth inch pilot hole in the wrench using a solid carbide drill bit and it drilled like it was butter then I went in with the second bit, uh, which was a quarter inch high speed steel bit, and that wouldn't even begin to uh, resize the hole. So now I'm going over to the Bridgeport mill and I'm using a solid carbide end mill to enlarge the hole to uh, one fourth inch. The quarter inch bit wouldn't even begin to uh, phase this tool steel, so with that eighth inch pilot hole in there, I am now in the milling machine and that's a quarter inch uh, solid carbide uh, end mill. And let's see how that does as far as opening that hole is concerned. It's a four fluter, but remember I have a, a pilot hole. So let's give that a try. through as if it was balsa wood. And there's the quarter inch hole. I know that weakens the wrench somewhat, but for what we're doing, I guess I don't care. Now for the hammer part of it, this is lead. This is solid lead. And at the present time, this is about uh, two and a half inches in diameter. I don't know where I got this lead, but I got two pieces like this and I'm going to face it off and then I'm going to turn it down to about one and three quarters diameter or one and a half just a, an inch back and then I'll cut it off so that I have a, a, a hammer that's about three quarters of an inch thick out of solid lead and then of course drill a hole in there and counter bore it like I did on the other one. Lead requires a nice uh, sharp tool and uh, I'm going to use a medium speed. It's very soft and gummy. Whatever I do, I don't want to cause that work to slip in the chuck. Look at those chips. Nothing like uh, steel chips and they're not sharp. And melt that down and make lead sinkers. And that's already good enough for a lead hammer. Now I'm turning it down to diameter with the same carbide tool. steel tool. I like this a little better for coming up uh, against the shoulder and this will probably be my last pass. It's starting to go on but just barely and boy is this lead soft. That's 
it, that's the right size. Now I'll put a nice chamfer on there with, uh, with the carbide bit, which will be 60 degrees. That's it. Now I'm going to drill it uh, like I did the other one, center drill, and then 5 16 diameter, about an inch in there, and then I'm going to counter bore it with that 3 8 bit, the same as I did with the brass, and I'm not going to show that on camera. I changed my mind. Here I am center drilling the lead. This material is so soft, it's kind of fun. It's self lubricating. quarter inch. Here's the one-fourth bit. I'm going in one inch. soft chips. And this is the 3 8 for the counter bar. Just the, the depth equals the length of the head on the cap screw. Now here's the cutoff operation. It's going to be 3 quarter thick. And I'm very leery about this thing grabbing, so I'll probably uh, cut about halfway in and finish it off with a coarse hacksaw. As far as I'm going, I'll finish it with a hacksaw. That was a minute and a half to saw through that. And I did not have the machine revolving. That was just uh, standing still. And a very coarse blade. I don't know where I got this, but it looks like it's about uh, 12 teeth or so on this hand hacksaw. However, the finish is terrible. So I will see what I can do about facing this off. But... I don't want to leave chuck marks on it. Not that it matters because this will soon get beat up. But for some reason I want it to look fairly pretty when this job is finished. There it is. It weighs at 11 ounces. I just weighed it on a postal scale. You know there's just no way of holding this without putting marks on it. So there's the chuck marks which I anticipated. And as the burrs come around on the back side, you know, it's just hard to get them off without scratching or leaving a, a mark on it, but it is just a hammerhead. I got a bit of a chamfer on there. It'll be really beat up after just uh, several uses. It is now bolted on, and my last step is to saw or grind this off uh, flush. I'll do that now. Quite heavy. I cut the hardened cap screw off with a Remington rod saw, tungsten carbide. It works great. And then took it to the abrasive belt, cleaned it off, and the lead nut body is done. You know what these remind me of? Those of you that uh, did automotive work, and uh, there was a hammer and uh, a multi-use tool that was used with tire balancing that where you could pry off the old weights and hammer on the new ones all with one tool. The similarity, maybe that's what inspired me. But uh, there we are, I got a lead one and a brass one on a three-quarter inch wrench. Now I'm not going to take this over and beat it up right now. If you want to see how these are used, look back in the uh, version 1 video of the Nut Buddy and uh, you'll see how I actually use this to loosen uh, the collet 
and the drawbar. Hope this is an idea that uh, some of you can put to use. This is Tubal Cane saying so long for now. Just a note of caution when you're working with lead you know it is a heavy metal, a hazardous metal so be sure and wash your hands thoroughly after handling the lead dispose of all the lead chips in a proper manner and uh, do not touch your mouth with a candy or cigarette or food or something while you're handling, the, handling this lead uh, just in case. This is Tubal Cane just uh, giving you a little warning on the hazards of heavy metals.